Ride the Car Guy here, and today we are at a new location that we're going to call the Cape. I'm working on my dad's car. This is a 2006 Pontiac Solstice, and uh, last week he was pulling out of the garage, and it really sounded loud. It sounded kind of just windy, if you will, and uh, we realized that the fans were running as soon as you turned on the car. Now, with a cold engine and electric fans, that shouldn't be happening at all. Uh, it should wait until the motor gets up to temperature and then start the fans up when it when it actually needs the assistance. After running the car for a while, it will show a code of P0128. And this is a Pontiac, so obviously that's going to be a GM code. Uh, but if you have something different, you know, the code itself, the actual verbiage was the the engine's not getting up to operating temperature. Temperature control is, is obviously very important in a vehicle. Uh, you certainly don't want it too hot, right? Because you're going to get warping and damage in the motor. But then too cold, uh, you know, it makes the vehicle inefficient. So you want to, it has a sweet spot, you want to keep it there. And it does that by turning on and off the fans at certain times and uh, opening up the thermostat as well. But if they're constantly running, the car will never get up to operating temperature because it's always cooling. Now, if you have a manual fan, a fan that's ran right off of your belt, you likely have a fan clutch, and that's a and that's going to be a totally separate issue. So if you have a fan that's always running or never running, and it works off of a fan clutch, uh, take a look at my other video on replacing a fan clutch, and that's likely going to be your issue if that if you have that configuration. Uh, it's a very simple setup. It's literally just a liquid clutch with a fan, and uh, there's not much to break there. So if it is broken, it's going to be your clutch. The electronic versions, however, uh, they have a they have a different setup, right? They have to be told when to turn on and off electronically. That's done uh, with a temperature sensor and a relay. So the temperature sensor gauges how hot the car is. Once it gets to a certain temperature, it throws the relay and turns on the fan. So there's two places we're going to look, and that's going to be the relay and then, of course, the temperature sensor. One of those two things is very likely going to be our culprit. So let's start by the relays. That's going to be the easiest thing to test. And if it doesn't work, then uh, we're going to move on to the temperature sensor. On a scale of 1 to 10, uh, really I'm going to put this job at a 3. It's actually really easy. Uh, as long as you go and you find the proper parts and uh, you're prepared, it's a pretty simple job. Uh, if you do end up dropping out some uh, antifreeze in preparation for this job, then I'll put it up to about a 4. But overall, this is a pretty easy job. I want you to feel comfortable completing it on your own. Now again, we're checking the relays first because it's super simple. Now, right in front of the passenger seat, underneath the hood, you have this big black box. And this is, of course, you know, on the Solstice. I don't know if any cars share this configuration. I'm assuming not. But you're going to have something similar to this in your car. So we pull this off. And underneath, you're going to find a lot of relays and uh, fuses. So uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to find a relay that is non-critical to the operation of the motor and then swap it out with one of the relays for the fan. And that way we can determine if the relay works or if it doesn't. So, in this car, 50 right here and 24 are cooling fan one and cooling fan two. Now cooling fan one, I assume is going to be the main fan and then cooling fan two is probably gonna be your auxiliary fan which is uh, when the AC runs. Uh, but in this case, we have both running all the time so uh, it's likely going to be our temperature sensor, but I want to show you how to diagnose this anyways. Over here in this configuration, this is number 14, and again, you can find a map underneath. Uh, just underneath the cover is going to be a map, and it's going to tell you everything that each relay and each fuse goes to. So uh, I'm just looking at this, and 14 is rear defogger. Now, obviously, rear defogger is not going to be critical to the operation of the vehicle, so we can safely start and run the car if we swap this out with a bad relay, right? There's going to be some in here that are going to be for fuel delivery or some other critical components of the vehicle. Obviously, don't disconnect those because you might not even be able to start it. Start by pulling out a relay that's good, and we know this is good because it's, you know, it's our rear defogger. You can get in the car and turn it on, and you know that it turns on. And then just swap it out with one of your fan relays. So we just turn that around, push it in, and there you go. You know that's a good relay. And then if you, you can turn on the car and see if your fans are on or off when you turn on the car. When you are swapping these out, they have the part numbers right on the front. So make sure that you're swapping it out with the exact 
same thing, all right? Don't swap it out with a black one. That's a different part number. Obviously, the smaller ones probably won't even work. So you just want to be careful, but just make sure they match before you swap them out. So I'm going to go start up the car. I'm going to put these in, start up the car, and see if the fan still runs. All right, so I started up the car, and sure enough, the fans still run full time, uh, no matter the circumstance. At completely cold temperatures, they're both firing up and uh, running full speed. So uh, next, we're going to attack the temperature sensor. So this is what a temperature sensor looks like. A really simple, straightforward piece. You just unscrew it from the side of the motor, and then you screw it back in. It's really that easy. And in this vehicle, uh, it's actually in a pretty convenient location, all things considered. It's right behind your exhaust uh, manifold, and it's sitting on the passenger side of the motor behind the manifold, so near the firewall, and it looks like an inlet or outlet pipe, I don't know. And then right here, this is what you're going to look for. This is a 19 millimeter, and all we're going to do is we're going to take a flathead screwdriver, pull off the electrical connector, back it out, and put a new one in. Now, fair warning, it's likely that you're going to get antifreeze coming out of here because this is literally supposed to be sitting in liquid and, and getting the temperature. That's the whole point of it. Uh, I'm going to try to, you know, <laughs> be quick and minimize the spilling. I really don't want to go through draining the system down to the level where it won't spill. Uh, that kind of sounds like a huge pain to me. But if you are worried about uh, some spilling or losing antifreeze, uh, you know, feel free to to empty some of the antifreeze out so it gets out of the top of the motor. I'm just going to try to be quick and hope that I minimize the spilling. So uh, let's try it out. So it did work. I just quickly pulled it out and it was only spilling a little bit of antifreeze and I was able to get the other one back in, you know, relatively quickly. And there was a little bit of spilling, but honestly, it's not worth dropping the uh, dropping antifreeze out of the system and getting it down to that level. I only spilled probably three ounces total and uh, the system won't even know the difference. So I'm just gonna take my 19 millimeter, tighten it down. We'll start up the motor and hope that the fans aren't running. All right, so we swapped it out. We started up the motor and sure enough, the fans didn't run. So this was the culprit. Now here's the old one and you can see it's pretty, pretty corroded. The new one that we put in was bright gold color, like a brass. And this one's really dark and just covered, so uh, it could be additives, could be things just piled up on it, and uh, it just didn't read accurately anymore. So it's, uh, it's resolved, we are good, and our engine will start running at operating temperature. The only note on this is that this had thread lock on it, and also a washer. If you, have, if you buy one and it has neither of those things, make sure that you put one of them on there. You don't want this leaking after you install it. So. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments below, and uh, thanks so much for watching.